All right, and we are live. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good afternoon to everybody on the East Coast. And I would like to thank everybody for joining us for, uh, for, for today's webinar, the first webinar of 2019. My name is Ken Miguel, and here with me is Oscar Cordova. Hi, everybody. And Mike Lugo. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, some of you. All right. So today we have a very interesting topic, a very unique, unique solution for CCTV, the uh, IP floodlight camera. Okay. So this webinar is brought to you by Blue Light Technology Group uh, with over not 20, actually 25 years of experience in the industry. Uh, Blue Light makes innovative yet simple solutions for everything video surveillance. Uh, we are ISO 9000 certified company and a GSA uh, approved vendor. Okay, so in this NVR, we're gonna talk about this camera. We're gonna show you guys how it works. We're gonna show you guys what the camera is, the specifications, and more importantly, as an installer, how to set it up different ways uh using an nvr using a, a a network or even using it by itself as a standalone surveillance unit right um oscar and mike will be helping me out uh on this webinar and guys guys uh, feel free to to ask any questions uh anytime during the webinar we are going to be answering them as we go you guys should see a, a chat box on your windows and stick around until the end of the presentation uh we're gonna uh, give you guys an offer to try out one of these cameras uh, a demo discount you guys will love it so you guys ready to start let's go oh, okay so let's start hot right off the bat let's show you guys how this camera works okay so imagine a camera installed on a driveway right do we have the the stream up imagine a camera you put on a driveway anywhere you know at nighttime there's no light and whenever somebody walks by a motion trigger turns on a white light okay so what what does the white light do if there's an intruder it will catch your attention so what's what are you going to do you're going to look at the camera right and you have a camera that's recording into your NVR, and there you go. That's evidence. Um, you can also use the light to, of course, know where you're going if you're walking. Um, but it's really, you know, it's really a great deterrent. It's great for for homes. Um, it's great for apartment buildings, you know, pathways, things like that. Now, take it even further. Imagine a business that should be that's close that there should not be an activity there but there's somebody there right we can enable this you guys hear that we can enable a siren to go off when the camera detects motion okay so you get the light you get a siren now you got a guy running for his life Right, but you got him on camera. Okay, so that's that's what this camera is uh, built for. Uh, those are the the markets that they're made for. Okay, so go ahead and um, let's let's talk about this camera, Oscar. So what what's the what are the nuts and bolts of this cam camera? Give us the specs and what's cool about it. All right, so first off, uh, we're gonna start off with the part number is a BM eighty thirty five. F as in Foxtrot. Uh, we're gonna take a look at what the camera looks like. It's a small camera uh, with 5.5 uh, inches in, in length and 3.5 inches in height. So it's, it's, uh, it looks like a bullet camera. It looks right? like a bullet camera. Uh, bullet if, camera. If, you, if you look at the top of uh, the in front of the cameras, you have two IR LEDs. Uh, you also have the, the, at the bottom, you have the LED white lights. Uh, on the white lights, uh, you're, you're getting a, a max of 800 lumens uh, of brightness. Uh, we also have the built-in uh, PIR, 
and it's uh, 2.5 inches in, in width. So th this camera has to go back to it. So that that PIR is what enables the motion detection built into the camera. Correct. Okay. And what are those? So what are those two lights? So that is that an IR LED up top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two IR LEDs on top, one on the left and one on the right, and then right below you, you have the LED white lights that will turn on uh, depending on uh, what you set it to, your motion or uh, PIR. Okay. So it is a nice compact camera uh, with, I mean, with the white light and the, the built-in PR on the front. So let's talk about some of the features uh, that it has. Uh, this camera is a five megapixel resolution. Uh, it has two-way audio, which works great. Uh, one is a deterrent if somebody you know, walking towards uh, your house, uh, you can let them know, hey, I, I see you, uh, I'm gonna call 911. Uh, it has integrated uh, PR sensors in it. Uh, has an alarm feature, which we already uh, showed. It has local SD recording. Uh, why would we do that is uh, you can actually set this camera up as a standalone. Uh, you don't need a DVR, so uh, it will record to a micro SD. Uh, it also has PoE, power over ethernet. Uh, you don't have to run a, a separate power line for it. It's rated, rated IP66, uh, so it's rated for outdoor, and it has H.265 compression. Mike, are you going to show us how to set up the SD card uh, yeah. stories, right? Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so let's start off with the two-way. Like I mentioned, uh, if somebody's walking to the door uh, and you notice them, uh, you know, if you have it set up on your on your phone, uh, you press the, the button to speak. Basically, you can tell, hey, we see you on call 911, and that works as a deterrent. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, you, you can see the, the built-in uh, speaker and mic. Um, the, the sound is very clear. Uh, you can also uh, later on in, in this uh, webinar we'll show you uh, uh, how you could change the, the, the volume. It has an integrated PIR uh, with a, a max distance of 20 feet. So if somebody's walking uh, towards a building, uh, it, it, it would uh, pick them up uh, right away, and uh, we could set the, the sensitivity on that as well, uh, which we'll be show you uh, shortly uh, once we we show you the settings of the camera. Uh, we have uh, the IR sensors. Um, that one has an IR night vision range of 65 feet. Um, so you don't have to be uh, directly uh, at the camera uh, on line of sight, but it goes all the way to 65 feet. Is that a, a smart IR? Uh, it's not a smart IR, but it does have adjustments on the light. So if it's too close or too far away, you can increase the, not the sensitivity, but the output of it. So yeah, okay. we got a question here. Uh, what is the maximum size SD card? So 128 will be your maximum um, SD card. Okay. Uh, another question: Can you go over frame rates? What's the frame rate of the camera? Yeah. So we're gonna go. Megapixel. I'm gonna actually go into the uh, record settings pretty uh, extensively um, in a moment. I'll go over frame rates. Uh, record settings, um, things like that. Okay, so we'll, we'll go with yeah. that later. Okay, all right, let's um, keep going. So the white lights, uh, it has, like we mentioned, it has uh, two white lights, uh, one on the left, one on the right. It has a distance of 30 feet. And again, uh, the lumens is up to 80. Uh, you can actually uh, change the, uh, how bright you want the light to be. And uh, we will show you that shortly as well. Um, so for the local SD recording, uh, in order to install the SD, uh, you will have to unscrew the, the screws on, on the front of the camera. Uh, the, that, that will pop off and it has a little uh, SD uh, in, uh, section so you can insert your card in there. Uh, th Mike, does it have to be formatted uh, before you put it in? So um, you will have to format the card in the camera itself. Um, and I'll go over that in a bit. But yeah, you, you do have to format it while it's in the camera. And we said it's 120. 120. So um, approximately how long would that last? So with the H.265 compression, uh, you might, depending on how you have the recording, if you're going 24-7, you're going to get roughly maybe four days out of one SD card. It's not too bad. At five megapixels? At five megapixels. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. So we actually have a comment here. Um, somebody who actually already purchased a camera. And they're saying that it works really good with uh, rural customers that have issues with animals eating like their lawn, their flowers, their crops. 
uh, this is a, a great way to uh, deter them. Uh, when the, the animal gets in, in the line of sight, the, light, the lights actually turn on and they pretty much get scared and they run away. Uh, oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty clever solution. Yeah, it is. Thank you for that comment. Uh, so now uh, we're gonna talk about what tools you would need uh, in order to install. Uh, so of course, uh, cable. Uh, if you're gonna be building, uh, making your own cable, depending on length, uh, you will need uh, the, the crimping tools. Uh, you also need a CCC TV tester. And now if, you have, if you're using uh, pre-made cables, um, you pretty much don't need uh, many tools. It's just pretty much plug and play. Uh, you have a couple, uh, three options on how to power up the camera. The first one will be with a, a 12 uh, DC uh, power supply. Um, the second one would be a PoE injector if you're not using uh, one of our NVRs that has a PoE. Uh, and you can also use a PoE switch. Use a bullet NVR. A yeah, bullet. So <laughs> a built-in PoE, it makes it simple, plug and play, and all that good stuff. So I have a question here. Uh, can you record to both the SD card and the recorder if so, does this device, uh, the frame rate between re recording and SD card, for example, 30 total frames, but 15 to the card and 15 to the recorder? So to answer the question, yes, you can do two separate frame rates because you are recording completely separate uh, recordings, one to the camera, one to the, to the recorder. Um, I actually have a couple instances where someone that stole the recorder thinking that they got away and there's been recording on the camera that we retrieved later on and they got the uh, the bad guy that way. So it's, it's a pretty cool um, feature to have. Can you can you have different frames per second and schedules for? Yes, because they are recording? they are separate. Like I said, they're separate recordings. So you're going to record to the recorder at one frame per second um, and the camera's going to have its own schedule, its own separate settings. Everyone. All right, so uh, once you uh, physically installed the, the camera, uh, we're going to show you uh, how to set up uh, the software. So the camera comes with a CD where you can install it on your laptop. And uh, basically, it has an IP search tool that once you uh, run the program, uh, you can click the search button and it will search any uh, device that is connected to your network. Uh, I can't emphasize how important the IP search tool is. Um, we have a lot of calls that you can't find the IP address. We don't know what it is. This tool is is uh, going to be your most and best friend in the field when installing uh, one of our cameras. So I can't emphasize enough how important that CD is. At least have the software on your on a laptop. So Mike, um, there's a there's more Mac users. Mm -hmm. More than now. I have a, I, I use a Mac. I don't have yeah. a CD around, right? Yeah, very true. I make them download this from our website. So. The only, it's not a bad thing, but the search tool is only runs on PC. The CMS, which is the client software, does run on a Mac. Okay, but you can download the, the, the soft PC version on from our website. Correct, if yeah. you don't have a, a disk drive. Correct, yeah, disk drives are becoming um, obsolete nowadays, so. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, so we have another uh, add-on to the previous comment regarding the, the animals. Uh, saying that the siren and the strobe combo works really great with animals. So the strobe uh, uh, that he's uh, talking about uh, on the light, there's two options where you have uh, just a straight uh, light or you can set it to a strobe uh, where it, the, the lights will start blinking. Uh, so there's actually two ways to turn that on. Uh, you can set it to strobe or depending on the, on, uh, the strength of the light that you, you put. Uh, if you go from uh, one to 69, it'll be a straight light. Once you go past 69, it actually uh, automatically uh, changes to, to a strobe light. Awesome. Are you able to show us, Mike, the strobe yeah, sure. function? Yes. Well, um, you want to do it? Right, okay. Yeah, I can do it real quick. Let me just do uh, this here. So, you guys see that? So, you guys should be able to see the strobing effect of the light. Awesome. Uh, perfect. So here's a screenshot of what the uh, the search tool looks like. Uh, so basically, uh, again, like I said, uh, you you will press the search button on the top left hand corner, and then it will show you the IP address of the device that is connected to to your network. 
And then there are uh, three ways of uh, monitoring the, the system. So the first one that we're, uh, we're gonna talk about is uh, the web browser. Um, so we're gonna show you how to actually set that up with a web browser and uh, Mike will, will go over that. Okay, so, so we've seen how the camera works. Uh, we know the specs of the camera. Now it's the meat and potatoes part, how to actually set this up, right? Yep. Okay. So we just talked about the, um, the search tool, how important it is and exactly why is this here. So I'm gonna run my search tool. You guys can see that I found three devices. We're gonna focus on the camera, which is one channel. And I can go ahead and I can click that IP address. It's gonna take me directly to the camera's uh, web GUI. We got a question here from a listener. Are you going to have a Wi-Fi version with built-in power instead of PoE and a vandal-proof version also? Does this camera have a relay switch that can be activated remotely? Okay, so there's like three questions there. Are we gonna have a Wi-Fi version of this camera? Uh, we would, we won't, uh, because th uh, this is still a commercial grade CCTV camera, and what we're finding is uh, cameras that have built-in Wi-Fi, built-in antennas in the cameras, do not work as well because you know cost. Um, it's just they're they're they they're not they don't work consistently and for what this these products are for, um, you gotta have it working a hundred percent of the time, right? However, you can use a, a wireless bridge, right? Um, to do a, a wireless application. Okay, so the the antenna is not built will not be built into the camera, uh, but you can use any wireless bridge uh, that you normally use. Um, uh, does that do we have a vandal proof version? So this is this is a weatherproof camera. Uh, vandal proof mostly applied to dome cameras, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, install this to where it's hard to reach it, of course. Uh, but this is a, a, a metal camera, and it is it's pretty resilient. And the last question, Mike, the, does it have a, a relay switch? So um, that question's kind of a little vague. It does have a not a relay switch that can trigger a remote device like some of our other cameras, uh, input output, I should say. It does not, but it does have a relay switch on the app where you can remotely turn on the siren or the light. So it has its own its own thing going on. Yeah. Okay. So uh, once we get the um, search tool up and running, you'll get to the browser. And for those of you who are familiar with all of our products, admin is always our default uh, password and username. You can go ahead and log into the camera. You should be able to see us. How's everybody doing? But I'm going to go into some settings here. And I'm not going to take too much time on some of these um, settings that are universal across our product. So live view. Basically, you can name the camera. It's got flicker control, um, name, and time. It can be displayed or not displayed on the live version view. Uh, image control, pretty important because you can tweak out the settings. Um, we have here IR cut delay. You can control the time that it takes for the IR to kick in. And one thing, Mike, with IP cameras, uh, IR cut mode, you can set this. Can you set this camera to color only? Yes. Or black and white only? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So you have the option to do color mode, which will not turn on that IRs and keep it in color. Um, black and white, which is going to turn on the IRs, but you're going to get a black and white screen always. And then there's a schedule um, that you can set. Yeah. to the you know how you want it to be yeah um the color mode especially if you put this camera up on a well-lit area oh yeah leave it on color mode and it will never go black and white yep yep uh so we can you can flip the image around say you install it in the application that has a weird angle and you have to put it upside down you're able to flip the whole picture digitally rather than go up there and have to turn it um same thing with angles uh, angle rotation you have a, a backlight compensation setting, uh, 3D noise reduction. WDR is very, very important um, option to have on a camera. Bright lights. 
bright lights, you need you need to see something in the foreground and there's too much light in the background, this is gonna be your best friend. Um, white balance, shutter control. Uh, really important when, again, different light situations, you need less light or more light to come in. Um, this exposure. is a 100 dB WDR, right? Yes, yes it is. And then, uh, so defog mode is not actually a, it's gonna defog, you know, if it's foggy outside, what it does is it's a digital setting it kind of darkens the picture a little bit just to uh, if there's haze in the background, so you're able to see things. Please make it accessible to show that that can you can everybody see the, the screen uh, correct? So privacy zone. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You get to block out areas that you do not want to be recorded or seen, you know, uh, maybe a store has a bathroom and you don't want, you know, the camera's gonna catch the corner of that, you wanna black that out, you're able to. Uh, record settings, record parameters. Uh, you can record in multiple streams, doesn't always have to be mainstream, we always, we do recommend mainstream. Um, record button, pre-record. NetBreak is an advanced uh, networking tool for advanced management network situations. So you have that option. Um, schedule, real important. So one of the real important things I want to talk about, you see some colors here at the bottom. Motion, PIR, no record, normal. These are your record settings. What you have here is what's going to be recorded to the camera. Not the MVR, but the camera itself. Um, later on there, you'll see the PIR motion again, and it's going to refer back to this schedule that we have originally set up here. So you're going to have to do a couple settings, and a, I'll get into why in a moment. But just keep in mind that you do have multiple settings here. Uh, network, of course, basic network information. Uh, UPnP is universal plug and play, um, and P2P switch. You want to have those turned on at least P2P switch if you're going to use. If you're familiar with our Quick Connect and the QR code of just scanning, and it's on your phone or your remote device, um, you want to turn that setting on. Video streaming. We had a question about video streaming uh, max frames per second. Uh, so it's a five minute camera, which will go 15 frames, but you can always adjust that. So if you don't want to do, you want to do 1080, you know, you can mix that up to better fit your bandwidth needs or, or different situations always have different um, settings. Uh, we mentioned that it's H.265 compression. Um, if you are using older NVRs or another manufacturer's NVR and it's not H.265, you do have to, Lower that to H.264. Also, there's an MPEG screen, MJPEG, which is pretty important for a lot of uh, home automation nowadays requires that uh, you use an MJPEG stream. So we also have that option as well. Um, codec level, bit rate. You have a constant bit rate or variable bit rate depending on high traffic areas. I don't want to go too much into all this stuff. We can do a whole webinar on just that, but you have numerous settings. Um, if you guys have questions about it, go ahead and ask the question. I can answer those questions individually. So, so we have a question right, right now, Mike. Uh, what is the highest resolution at 20 frames per second that you so use? It's gonna go 15 frames per second. The camera will will do. That's it's gonna be its max, no matter what, all the way across. Um, yeah, that's just the camera's limitation. Um, email, you wanna get email alerts. Uh, you just need the SMTP server and all your provider's information will go here. DDNS, kind of obsolete with our um, Quick Connect function that we have now, but it's still there if needed. IP filter, uh, you're actually allowed to um, give access to certain IP addresses or not give access, access to certain IP addresses. It gives you that option. RTSP, another setting that we have in pretty universal on all of our cameras. Um, FTP, file transfer protocol, different networks, different settings. Um, SNMP is another uh, protocol used in advanced networks. Uh, alarm. So this is where I want to kind of focus on because you have motion, PAR, and deterrent. So here's the difference. Um, the motion detection setting will detect pixel movement. And that's how you get the motion setting. As aside from the PIR, a PIR will actually detect, it stands for passive infrared sensor. So it's every object that has 
any heat coming from it over one degree is going to give off some sort of infrared heat. And this sensor allows you to, to detect that. So it's going to be more um, reliable source than motion. And the reason why we have both of them because there's different situations. Um, but the PIR, we, I would recommend you would want to use in the case of the floodlight because if something's going in front of the camera that's giving off heat, most likely it's living. And so you want to be able to turn that light on. Motion can get triggered off, um, you know, hot days and, uh, you know, just heat effects and stuff like that. So PIR is a way more effective um, motion detecting system. Now, when they purchase the camera, will this be enabled right out of the box? That's a good question. So out of the box, the settings on the schedule are on from, I believe it's 7 at night to 6 in the morning. So, of course, you don't need it on in the daytime. So if you want to adjust that, you can. Um, and I'll get to this, that schedule part right now. So we have a quick question. Is this the is type, of, is this type of picture the customer will get? Uh, are you well, meaning the one we see right now with uh, for the infrared, or are you talking about the main uh, 5 megapixel picture? So, yeah, no, this is just our setting. We have it turned down for the sake of this webinar. Yeah. I have the lights. It's dark in here, so just so you guys can see the lights. But, no, they got a way clearer picture than that. Yeah. So um, we're live streaming also. So. Yeah. We don't want to take up too much bandwidth and have a bunch of choppiness, but the picture is extremely clear. Uh, let me move on to the deterrent. So deterrent is where you will find your light settings, your siren settings, uh, sensitivity, as well as the schedule I was talking about. Um, we have it enabled for 24-7 right now for the sake of the webinar, but let me go back. You'll have the siren settings, light settings, strobe light, um, constant light, the duration that you want the light to be on, as well as the sensitivity that... Uh, it's going to pick up. So going back to these two settings here, you can set either one. You see there's a deterrent switch on both of these functions. Um, and you can set which one you want to enable that siren. Or I, I do not recommend that you put both of them on um, because it will get confusing for you to know what's really happening out there. Um, I would recommend the PIR, but every situation is different. And you're probably going to have to take that into account when installing it, how you're going to need to go about setting that alarm trigger. Um, moving on. So device. It says HDD, uh, meaning SD card. So this is where you will have to format it. You can see there's a format disk option. It'll tell you how much room you have left and how you want to overwrite your video. Um, uh, real quick, Mike, uh, we have a question here. What, what is the MSRP on this uh, camera? So the MSRP on this camera is three hundred and sixty dollars, three six zero. And uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, like we said in the beginning, uh, we're gonna go over uh, special uh, demo pricing for, for you. Right. So audio, another very important um, function to go over. So you see that there is an audio switch here, volume input and output. We talked about earlier that it is a two-way audio device, meaning you can hear. And you can speak into it. It has a built-in mic and a built-in speaker. Um, this could be done from your smartphone. Um, you see someone that you know you don't want there, you're able to tell me, hey, get out of here. Or you can even use it as an intercom device, either way. Um, but this is where you will set that function on. Uh, moving on, log, simple logs. You can just, something happened, you want to see if there was an error or when recording was triggered, someone logged into it, you're able to do all that. Uh, system, general information, time, user and account settings, uh, information about the about the actual camera, MAC address, hardware versions, uh, advanced. You have a firmware update. If we release a firmware update, it needs to be updated. This is where you will find it. Uh, defaulting the camera, as well as uh, doing simple reboots once a week, once a day, whenever you decide to do that. Lastly, I want to do uh, just local settings. This is so. This is the camera itself. We're not talking about NVR. This is just the camera as a standalone. You set the path of where you want those recordings to go um, when you're viewing it using your computer as a as a viewing station. 
and you can set the type of recording. Real important, if you're going to use it like that, make sure you save it to AVI or MP4. RF is a raw file that's usually used in court situations, um, but you're not going to find a player that's going to play that video back because it's proprietary. So you want to switch it to AVI MP4. It's very important. And playback. Playback, of course, we're just going to, just like all of our other products, very simple, timeline based. You click along where you want to see, and you'll go straight to that video playback. So that's using the camera on a network plugged to a switch or using the camera as a standalone? As a standalone, yep. Um, yeah. We're going to go over the, NV, uh, the NVR portion. You go over the NVR, yeah. yeah. So, or know. hooking it up to an NVR. Hooking right? it up to an NVR. So most of you are aware that if you hook it up to an NVR, it's plug and play. There's not really much you have to worry about when doing so. But what if you are using it as a a standalone or off a on the network. How do I get that camera on my recorder? Very simple. So this is our MVR, this is our interface. This is the IP section. There's two things you want to do right off the bat. Um, because they're set to plug and play, we have a switch function for adding uh, cameras that are not connected directly to the PoE, onboard PoE of the recorder. By default, auto mode will do that but I want to add a camera that's not connected. It's on the network. So I'm going to switch this to manual mode, save that, sort to save, but then I can go to display and now I can add my camera. The easiest way to do it is user defined ad. You do a simple search. It should take less than 30 seconds to a minute. So it's basically right now running through my network, finding what cameras I have that fit my scheme. And bam, I found one. There it is right there. I can. Check mark that and add selected device. Give it around again 30 seconds. Faster than that, you can see in the background it already came up. And there's my camera. And, and very, very simple. And you can see that I have here. Oh, you get the controls on my controls device. are also on my my uh, live view. And I'm able to disable that. I can also do my siren from here. There it is again. Right click that. Awesome. And there's my time. Yeah. So very simple, very user friendly. It doesn't get much easier than than uh, connecting this camera on the network than it does. It next thing is you know the plug and play factor that we have, but very simple, very if, user friendly. If you target, if you're a type of dealer that targets home builders, you can package this with a couple of turret cameras and maybe one of these for a driveway. That's a that's a good one, um, and that that addition of the white light and this the sound and the built-in mic really just makes it a unique addition to a surveillance system. Very very unique, especially so, nowadays with the you know everybody has the um, doorbell cameras where you can speak through them, and so it's it does the same thing basically. So it looks like we have another question. Uh, is it possible to load a pre-recorded audio file on the camera alone or on the MVR? That's a good question. No, it's not. But um, that's a pretty good um, option. Maybe we can ask yeah. about that. That's a that's a very good question. Though. Yeah. The sound is already preloaded. Yes, the sound is preloaded. Pre yeah. programming the camera. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, lastly, I just want to go over real really quick on how to add it to uh, the CMS, our our uh, central management so management software. Um, very simple. It's already plugged into my network. Um, group device management is where you load any device. I can just do a simple add online device. It's just like my search tool. And right away, I see that I find it there. I highlight it. In this case, we're using the IP rather than the P2P. Um, add selected device. I give it name, username. Of course, we already know it's admin. And admin. And it adds very quickly. And I have it at the bottom. So that's it. That's all it takes to add it. Um, very simple, very user friendly. Um, yeah, it doesn't really get any simpler than that. 
And then the third option would be the the quick connect, which pretty much all you have to do is scan the barcode on the camera if you're doing standalone, uh, or scan the, the barcode on the, on the MVR if, if you're uh, connected uh, directly to an MVR. Yeah. Uh, if you are not currently using Bolide, this is one of the best things about the, you know, the the, the product from DVRs, MVRs, one app that will do both. So we already went over, over the integrating. So this one, uh, we really don't want you to do this, but if... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we get a question. We get this question a lot. Uh -huh. Can I use this camera with another manufacturer? Yes, you, you can. Uh, so if that manufacturer, if that third party uh, NVR has Onviv, with, which is a universal language that the multiple manufacturers are using so uh, the, the camera and the NVRs will communicate, yes, it will work. Okay. What, what's the on version of the camera? So 2.4 um, profile. Profile S. Yeah, the, the, the good thing about this camera, I'm going to say right now about the on function is that you can log into the camera itself. And if you are going to use it on if you guys are familiar with on or not familiar with on um, it's great because it allows you to use uh, products with other manufacturers but you lose some functions when doing that. The beauty of this camera is you're able to log into it and still use its functions as a standalone and have it on an OnViv MVR. So you get the best of both worlds, even though you're using OnViv. So it's another plus uh, an advantage to having uh, the functions on the camera itself. Okay, and then uh, what are the ideal applications for this camera? So uh, basically any areas where it's very dark lit, where there's Hardly any any light. Uh, it could be either a commercial area or residential, like in the front of the porch, on the side of the house, uh, backyard, uh, apartment, the, units. apartment units, um, patio. The, the patio. There's locations where like there's a, a dark hallway. Uh, you will definitely want want to put uh, one of these, and uh, you can set the alarm as well uh, when it's a commercial area and, and that. And for business owners, you know, loading docks, loading docks, yeah. warehouse entrances. You know, these are critical areas that could use the, the light and the sound deterrents. Okay. And for animals, we saw. Yeah, for, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we need to add that. Uh, it's good for rural areas to have uh, animals. Uh, so uh, does anybody have any questions uh, before we, uh, we close yeah. it out? So um, we're going to be opening it up for, for questions. Um, but I would like to thank everybody for, for joining the uh, webinar um so demo pricing so we can give you up to 20 percent off uh the first unit so call us at this number they see on the screen for availability um and the nearest distributor near you um if you're working with a bullet distributor just tell them that you attended our webinar and we'll be able to honor a demo discount for you okay so Let's uh, again, thanks, thanks, guys. Hopefully, uh, you guys uh, learned a lot about this product. It's a great solution. Try it out on on your next project, and I'm sure customers will love them. If you guys think of any other questions after this, uh, feel free to give us a call, or you can email Mike uh, or Ken or myself at the emails uh, uh, shown on the screen. Thank you again. All right, so uh, we got a question here. Is it possible to? Uh, and and uh, we're also going to be uploading this webinar on our on our YouTube channel, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But end of the day, it should be should be up. Okay. I just want to know: Will you have a webinar on the fiber products? Um, that's that, that might be in the in the future. We'll we'll fig we'll, we'll figure it out. Another question here. Is the microphone weatherproof? So yes, um, the IP66 will cover the whole the whole product, the microphone, speaker, camera. Um, the IP66 indicates that it's you're good outside, it's good for the weather. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about MSRP. This is three hundred sixty dollars MSRP, right? Okay. 
So it looks like we have no more questions. Actually, no, there's one more coming in. Do you have this camera in a very focal lens? Not at the moment. Uh, this uh, is uh, right now a 3.6 millimeter. All right, very cool camera, guys. Thank you, Brian. I think you'll love this also. Oh, MSRP is $360. For dealer pricing, call your Bolide rep um, I'll call, or call your, your nearest Bolide distributor. Okay, so uh, I think we covered a lot. Um, again, thanks guys for joining us today. Uh, be on the lookout for the next webinar. Uh, this, again, this will be on YouTube. Thanks and everybody have a great day. Thanks guys.